Hello, I'm Jessica Frank, Ada J. Author's project manager. Ada J. Author is a project of CALI, the Center for Computer Assisted Legal Instruction, and IIT Chicago Kent College of Law. I'm here to talk to you today about Ada J. Author because it's the leading document assembly software tool used by legal aid organizations, courts, and law schools to automate forms for pro se litigants. Before we dive in, let me give you a little background on what Ada J. Author is and why there's a need for it. Study after study has shown that there is a civil justice gap. There are 60 million Americans that are income eligible for legal aid. That generally means for a single person making less than $15,000 a year and for a family of four, $31,000. Consistently, it's been proven that around 80% of the civil legal needs of low income people go unmet each year. Even if people identify their problem as a legal one and make it to a legal aid organization, 50% of the time they are turned away due to a lack of attorney resources. There are only about 5,000 legal aid attorneys to help those 60 million people eligible for aid. These people by necessity then become self-represented litigants. The problem is even bigger in many areas of the law. In consumer debt, eviction, or child support, it can be more like 95 to 100% of the litigants are self-represented. In 2004, Chicago Kent and the Illinois Institute of Design did a study of courthouses around the country. They sat in five courthouses and watched pro se litigants try to navigate the system. They found that the greatest barrier for self-represented litigants in accessing justice was getting over the hump of dealing with court forms. Court forms were created by lawyers for lawyers. They can be incredibly difficult to navigate and understand, even for those of us with a law degree, much less a self-represented litigant in a stressful and unknown situation. From that study came a book called Meeting the Needs of Unrepresented Litigants. A to J author was offered as a solution. Forms are the language that the courts, lawyers, and the system use to talk to the outside world and amongst themselves. If you don't talk form fluently, you will not be understood and you will not have a good result. Existing interfaces in 2005 were mostly designed for professionals, lawyers, court staff, and clerks to quickly fill out well understood information. They were not designed for self represented litigants who commonly have either a high school education, English as a second language, are stressed because they have a legal problem, and are not familiar with legal terms or maybe aren't fluent in form. The existing tool that was in place in many legal aid organizations was Hot Docs. The Legal Services Corporation started funding document assembly projects through its Technology Initiative Grants, or TIGs, and some forms were automated. However, user testing showed that the Hot Docs interface was still not right for self-represented litigants. It was still too form-like. So the State Justice Institute, the National Center for State Courts, and the Legal Services Corporation funded the creation of Ada J. Author. It was based off the recommendations of the Meeting the Needs study, the results of those months of observing pro se litigants in court. A to J Author's design thinking approach was a collaboration of Cali, Chicago Kent College of Law, and the Illinois Institute of Design. The design includes lots of white space and asking one question at a time or for one piece of information at a time from the end user. With extensive user testing, we've found that slowing down the process by breaking up the information actually speeds up the entire process. It's not necessarily intuitive, but it has been shown to work repeatedly. Also in the design, we have two avatars, one representing the end user and one is the guide avatar. The two avatars walk together down the path to the courthouse. The path moves closer to the courthouse as the user progresses, which visually indicates the fact that they are getting closer to completion. As the avatars move on, there are also tools we call just-in-time learning features that give them additional help in answering the questions. I'll talk more about those in a bit. For almost a decade, we added features and built up the authoring capacity with this interface. However, we saw a shift coming in how people would be accessing the A to J guided interviews. This was around 2010 when smartphones were really kicking off and people were more actively going online on their phones. The problem was A to J Author was originally built in Flash and that doesn't work on smartphones. In 2012, we started a complete rewrite of the software to the current version called A to J Author 6. The current version is written in JavaScript and HTML with a CanJS framework. All that is just text speak 
for the current version runs in any modern browser for the end user to use, including our addition of a mobile responsive viewer that recognizes the size of the user screen and adjusts itself accordingly. The document assembly community is still working through converting the existing corpus of A to J guided interviews. It's an ongoing struggle for many organizations to find the time or the resources to devote staff time to converting and maintaining these interviews. That's where law students come in. This is a project where law students, either in four credit courses or independent study, can partner with legal aid organizations or courts in need of automation help. It's a benefit to the legal aid or the court because they get tech savvy students who know how to automate documents to work on their projects. And it's a benefit to the students because you get to build a port portfolio of tech projects to take into the real world job market. You make connections in the legal world with subject matter experts and attorneys in the courts or legal aid space, and you get to work on something that actually helps people. So some of the magic of an A to J guided interview comes with what we call just-in-time learning features. These include learn mores. Learn mores are a way to give the end user additional information at the point in which they need it. You can explain a legal concept, give them the additional resources they need to answer the question at hand, or give them examples of how others similarly situated have answered the question. These learn mores can be simple text or as shown here, a graphic. As they say, a picture can be worth a thousand words. Instead of trying to explain where to find something on their court form or where to sign, just include an image with an arrow. A learn more can also be a video. There are great videos out there explaining difficult legal concepts in plain language that can be added to your A to J guided interview. Another just-in-time learning feature is a pop-up. It's always best to avoid legal jargon whenever possible, but sometimes you just need to use that legally relevant term. A pop-up is a way to provide a definition when you have to use that legalese. Before we talk more about A to J author, let's cover how document assembly works in general. You start with an underlying court form or legal document that you want to automate. That form becomes what is called a template. The template contains variables all the blanks an end user would need to fill out to complete the form. Those variables are tied to specific questions in the interview that you ask the end user. The end user answers the interview questions by filling in the blanks. Those answers are stored in the variables. Those variables are stored in the answer file. The answer file format is .anx. That's an XML file format. That answer file is transmitted to the server when the user hits the Get My Document button at the end of the interview. The server puts the answer file together with the template, replaces the variables in the template with the answers the user input, and returns a completed document to the end user. The authoring interface was designed to be user-friendly as well. We wanted actual lawyers, court staff, and law students to be able to use it fairly out of the box. We didn't want lawyers to have to learn how to code to be able to use our expert system. While teaching lawyers to code is trendy now and something I think is useful to know conceptually, it isn't required to use A to J Author. Lawyers should conceptually understand how the tools they use are built and the frameworks behind them. A basic tech competency is a must in today's law practice. You should be able to talk tech and understand how software works, but I don't think all of us need to actually code in Python or JavaScript. So the authoring interface is meant to be intuitive, and we have a lot of training resources for you to learn as you learn A to J Author. I'll talk more about those in a bit. The main structure of A to J Author is tab-based. You move down the list of tabs and add the information as needed. The one you'll spend the most time on is the Pages tab. That's what's shown here. It's where you create pages, script question text, add fields, connect one question to the next, and script logic if you need it. Our map tool allows authors to quickly draft the outline of their interview by adding, dragging and dropping, and connecting questions. This mapping tool lets you build a working draft of your interview that you can then go back in and fill out the details of each question. The template creation process is meant to be easy to use as well. There are two options for templates in the A to J document assembly tool, or the A to J DAT, as we call it. You can create a text template or a PDF template. Both result in a PDF being generated for the end user. The text template starts you with a blank screen and you add elements to it to build your template. It's kind of like a blank Google Doc, and you have to build the document from it. It's most useful for cases in which you don't have an existing court form to work with, 
or you want to generate a letter or motion of some sort that will contain an unknown amount of text input by the end user. The PDF template lets you start with an existing PDF form and upload it to add variable fields to it to automate it. This is an example of an uploaded PDF. It's one of the sample exercises we have to train you. To automate it, you draw fields over all the blank spaces and add variables to it. This is similar to what you'll practice if you do any of the sample exercise homework. This non-programming author interface has served us well. A to J Author is the most popular tool for low-income people to create their legal documents and help represent themselves in the world. We're in 42 states, two provinces in Canada, Australia, Spain, Guam, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. There are over 1,100 A to J guided interviews out in the wild, being used over 600,000 times a year. Through our partnership with Law Help Interactive, our self-hosting organizations, and our own Cali-hosted A to J.org, a to J Author has been run almost 6 million times since 2005. A to J Author supports 16 languages. We've done the work of translating a set of common to all interviews, words or phrases. Think words like next, exit, save, required. We also technically support the special characters used by some of these languages. However, you as the author need to do the actual translation of the question text, the buttons, and the field labels. We offer free hosting for any project designed to be used by a self-represented litigant on Cali's a to jorg site. You can publish your A to J guided interview and your A to J debt template directly from the publish tab within a to J author to a to jorg They can be used for testing or demonstration purposes and come with a watermark, or can be run live for use by the public without a watermark. Your end users can run the interviews anonymously or create accounts and save their answers to come back later to complete or regenerate their documents. Once you're ready to start your authoring journey, we're here to help you. We have a YouTube channel with over 40 videos related to document assembly, including many on different aspects of authoring within A to J Author, but also some on plain language, how other organizations are using document assembly, and even a couple on hot docs. Our channel is youtube.com slash A to J Author. Our website, a to jauthor.org, contains many resources to get you started. The most important one is probably the A to J Authoring Guide. That's our software manual. It contains detailed descriptions of how to do everything in A to J Author. You can find that under the Learn tab in the top navigation bar at www.a to jauthor.org. We also have over a dozen sample exercises created by our team to help you learn the software. These are step-by-step -step instructions complete with screenshots and exercise files that'll help you practice your authoring skills. You can keep up to date on the latest A to J Author news by following us on our Twitter account at A to J Author. We announce code pushes, bug fixes, upcoming webinars, new features, and general document assembly news. This next section is going to cover relatively new enhancements to A to J Author that make it easier for end users to use A to J guided interviews, make it easier for authors to create new interviews, and easier for authors to track the impact of their work. In 2018, we released our own A to J analytics tool. We use an open source analytics product called Matomo. Matomo lets us add their tracking code to each of the pages of the interview and to see how people are using the guided interviews. It gives authors more insight into the impact of their work with the ability to see how, when, and where end users are interacting with their A to J guided interviews. It shows runs, where people left the interview, how many times learn more's pop-ups and save and exit were clicked, and also gives demographic data about the user, their browser, operating system, and general location. But we're aware of, aware of security concerns too. That's a part of why we chose Matomo over Google Analytics. We host Matomo on our own Kali servers, so the user's data isn't being mined by Google. We have a pretty in-depth privacy policy that dictates what we're tracking and what we're not. We anonymize the last four digits of the IP address, so we get a general location, but nothing close enough to tag it to an actual person. We also don't collect any personally identifiable information. We aren't looking for what the user is typing into the interview field or looking at their answer files. The new enhancement in 2020 is the release of the A to J analytics dashboard. This allows authors to access their own information and generate their own reports. These reports, found on, under the analytics tab within your A to J guided interview, allow you to customize reports and see how the interview is being run by your end user. 
At the end of 2019, we also released six new avatars with five skin tones and eight hair color options. We wanted this new set of avatars to be as inclusive as possible, but not a time vacuum for people filling out the forms, because ultimately the avatar doesn't matter to the completion of the form. So we're add we've added the new avatars and a way for users to pick the one that best represents them independent of the what's your gender question that existed in older interviews. The user sees all eight avatar options, then is able to pick from the five skin tones and eight hair colors. This is now the default avatar picking option for new blank interviews and can be added to existing interviews by adding the user avatar question type and the variable user avatar. In 2018, we had an independent accessibility audit of our A to J viewer, the tool used to play the A to J guided interviews for end users. Since then, we've been making improvements to the A to J viewer to bring it into WCAG 2.0 AAA compliance. WCAG stands for Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, which are a standard on the internet for accessibility. 2.0 is the level of the standard, and their compliance levels are A, AA, and AAA. For everything possible, we sought the AAA level, which is the highest. Some changes include marking up the interview better in the backend code, so screen readers have an easier time navigating through it. We've also added additional labels, alternative text, and transcript fields for multimedia options. Videos can be made full screen, and additional controls have been added. We've also made other alterations, like changing the keyboard input type for phone number fields so that the number keyboard pops up automatically on mobile devices. All of these improvements make the interviews more accessible, not just to those who may have vision or hearing impurities, but really it makes it better for everyone. I hope I inspired all of you to try out A to J Author, but if you're really gung-ho about moving forward with the project, we have a couple options for you. You can start creating interviews and hosting them on a to j.org, which I talked about before. So long as you don't charge self-represented litigants to use it, we won't charge you either. If you want a bit more control, there's always the option to self-host. What I'm showing here is our GitHub repository for our A to J viewer. We also have a repository for the A to J DAT, the document assembly tool. Our back-end developer, Tobias Enterejo, has done a great job of including instructions on how to self-host and how to demo files. He's also available to support those who self-host by answering questions and debugging problems. We also have open source the A to J author tool itself, and it has a GitHub repository at github.com slash ccali slash A to J author. So that's what I have prepared for you all today. If there are any questions, you can always feel free to email me at jessica at Thank you.